This episode is brought to you by Cheetos Deja Tu Huella. Deja Tu Huella means leave your mark, and that's exactly what Latinos are doing. They're transforming the world around them, pushing boundaries with their unique perspectives. It's their superpoder. Join Cheetos and celebrate the heroes that are leaving their mark with the Deja Tu Huella program. You can also celebrate by checking out the new podcast, Batman Unburied, presented by Cheetos Deja Tu Huella. Visit Batman Unburied on Spotify to learn more. Empire. Welcome to the latest edition of All Caps after Game 5 against Florida. Capitals blow a 3-0 lead and lose 5-3 to the Florida Panthers with former Capitals defenseman Carl Osner. I'm AP Hockey writer Steve Wino. Before we get into the loss, I just want to send our best to Joe Beninati. Lost his voice kind of midway through the second period there. Couldn't finish the game. All the best to Joe. But Carl, what happened? Oh, honestly, that was a, that was a messed up game. It looked just like almost Groundhog Day, you know, at the beginning. So, you know, she tipped one in. Uh, and you know them just kind of rolling the way that they were still playing solid defensively um i thought sammy was great in the first period i think he he was pretty solid standing in there made some good saves and and then that second period was just the one of the weirdest periods i've seen i actually had it i had to catch up i think it was like uh i was like six minutes behind or something like that because i was trying to watch a, a little bit of my episode of survivor during the intermission and i went <laughs> i went a little too long so i was uh can't, can't you was, pause it can't, can't you pause it and do that do that i you know what i was trying to but one tv was in one room and then the other tv was outside and i was i just kind of got thrown off and i lost track of time because there was a big challenge in survivor happening and so i came back and i i, I started watching that and then all of a sudden just bang 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 like that i'm like okay there it is that's the game they're like like you said before we started this they were cruising and i really then... i really i really did like like we've seen a lot of these these capitals games and i know everybody's really cynical but i really thought when they went up three nothing and samsonov was playing as well as he did that they had this game exactly like they they had swagger they looked like they were playing solid and florida looked they looked shot they looked they did. like they were done and i'm trying to remember which was the goal that uh that set them off the was it the which was their first goal? Who scored their first goal? That first, uh, I'm losing count because they scored and, five in a row there. Yeah, um, I'm trying to remember, but it doesn't matter. But it was just like the, for, the first Florida goal was was Verhage, Verhage, Verhage's, okay. Verhage's goal, and then Hornquist, and then Reinhardt. Right, the Verhage goal. That was the uh, was that the two on one yeah. sick sick pass. Yeah, like that. That's it. Like an odd man rush. Like Florida does not need much chance, much opportunity to. To score a goal like like pretty much every single one of their goals was just opportunistic right they they jumped on something and, yep. and they made you pay and they haven't had those chances all series the caps have been clinical with their defense and not making mistakes and and they they're only getting whatever they get off of off of something the caps do pretty much so it was just it was just unfortunate and then a couple little couple little pinches here and there for both teams um you know it just seemed to turn the tide so it was it was nuts but I don't know. It wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, it was an entertaining game to watch, I guess. But it was. It was pretty shocking. Yeah, I, I guess at that point, like you're the second intermission. Like, what's the mood at that point? Because I'm sure at that point, somebody's got to step up and say, "We got to not let this let this slip away." Because it's three three at the second intermission, and then it did slip away. That's exactly it. I mean, I'm sure somebody said that and, and said, you know, we we know we know what this is like. We know how to play in these situations. Let's, of course. You know, let's let's do what we do. It's kind of the standard stuff. Um, and and still kind of kind of found found a way. You know, I was, I was looking at that 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 uh, fourth goal, the one that they scored. And you know, we, there's this thing that we do, in, uh, and I feel bad for him. But there's this thing that we would do called the folder, right? Where all the funny funny clips of guys falling and toe picking and all that. And I feel bad with Orlov toe pick there. Um, you know, to to help whoever that was to to speed up ice and. You know, it's 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 just unfortunate that it's a, it's a little mistake like that. You know, something that is typically avoidable, and uh, and you know, even whatever their talk was in the period in that um, intermission wasn't didn't seem to be enough. But you know what, I wish I would have seen more of was Ovi. You know, like I didn't see him until the last until there was eight minutes left in the game. You know, yeah, and, we, yeah, and and you know what, he was actually double shifting. Like, yeah, they, which they, which which in theory, like that's a guy that's your left left loves to do a lot. 
Yeah, exactly. And double shifting, but I mean, you know what I mean? Like I didn't, I didn't yeah. really see him out there. Right. And that was the thing. Like he, he started to really turn it up. I thought in uh, halfway through the third period, but, but um, I don't know. It was, it was, I would have loved to have seen him take over that game, you know, even, even after they, uh, the Panthers scored their, their first goal or their second goal, even just to have him take over that game. And, and uh, turn the tide, but I mean, overall, it was it was a solid hockey game. It was pretty physical too. A couple couple nice hits too, but it was it was just an unfortunate result. Even Mantha and Ekblad getting into it at the end there. Yeah, surprising, very surprising. I actually was watching. Um, I was switched over at that time to the other feed, and I was listening to I think it was Kevin Weeks who was on there talking about Mantha <laughs> being able to feed Ek- Ekblad. You got to be careful there. It, it's it's pretty it's. Pretty funny to see, you know, guys like that fight in the playoffs. Doesn't happen all that often. So, yeah, it was it was pretty interesting. Get get uh, the series has been pretty heated, you know, and without having Tom out there, it, it you know it changes. There isn't really a, a heavyweight out on the ice. Yeah, this team does miss Tom Wilson. When we come back on all's caps, we'll, we'll talk about Carter Verhage's night for the Florida Panthers. Uh, a little bit more about what went wrong with the Washington Capitals, and later on, kind of what they're going to have to do in Game Six to avoid elimination. It's me, the sun-soaked tropical hotel looking for a companion who enjoys short walks to sandy beaches and exotic bird sightings. Must love a spontaneous voyage on a privately owned catamaran. My strengths include ocean and jungle views, your choice, plus the occasional ukulele serenade. My only weakness? You'll never want to leave me. Download the hotels app to find me, your perfect somewhere. It's so nice out there. Out there in the Mexican markets where chili stretch in the sun. High in the mountain air between backcountry skis and kids doing the first snowplow. Or next to the pool after a long day of forgetting what day it is. We're all here to get out there. And come home more us than the us that went away. And when you save on travel as an Expedia member, you can travel even more. It's so nice out there. So let's go. Expedia. Made to travel. Terms apply. See site for details. Welcome back to All's Caps after the Capitals blew a three-goal lead and lost 5-3 in Game 5 in Sunrise with former Capitals defenseman Carl Osner. I'm A.P. Hucker and Steve Wino. We'll get back to the, to the Capitals in a second. Uh, Rangers uh, rallied to beat the Penguins tonight, uh, win Game 5 there, force a Game 6. And Sidney Crosby, who, again, we, we've talked a lot about Sid, and you don't love to give Sidney a lot of, Crosby a lot of credit. I was talking to Anson Carter yesterday. I said, who has been the best player in the playoffs who's not named Cal McCarr? And he said Sidney Crosby. He takes an elbow to the head from Jacob Truba. I don't think it was intentional. I still think Truba might get suspended, but not not great for anybody to see Sidney Crosby have a, a, a maybe a concussion or, or, or an injury that knocks him out of the playoffs. Yeah, nobody – you don't want to see anybody get hurt. I mean, realistically. Absolutely. I, mean, yeah, I know people – I know people joke about it, but you, you don't you don't want to see anyone get hurt, especially the the best all around player in the game <laughs> and and the way he's been playing in the playoffs and and a weird one too where you know it some of those, sometimes those are the weird ones that just glance off and and it can have some you know long lasting uh, issues there like we've seen him have in the past. So you know I you know as much as I I would enjoy seeing the Penguins lose, yeah, I, not I this see, way, right? Yeah. I don't want to see a player like that get hurt. So it, it's too bad, and, and hopefully he's going to be did all right. Did you play in that outdoor game in Pittsburgh? I did. So, so I mean, yep. like, again, like everybody gives gives Davis Seckel shit. Like, he didn't mean anything by that, right? Like, But, yeah, but, but there's I a mean, history of, of Crosby concussions that, like, you don't want to see anybody who's – anybody get uh, multiple concussions, let alone the best player in hockey. Yeah, exactly. Like, you give guys shots every now and then, but you're never expecting someone to get, you know, concussed right. or, you know, have something like that happen. It's it, – it's unfortunately just you know comes with the territory, but it, yeah, there's no no intention of of a long term injury like that. It just it just happens sometimes. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, the Capitals have have been playing in this series without Tom Wilson. I'm going to assume they're not going to have Tom Wilson for the next for Game Six in, in DC on Friday, and probably a, a potential Game Seven. W- what parts of the game have they missed, Tom Wilson? Well, I think he I think he brings some energy. I think he he definitely helps on the four check when when he's out there. The other team's defenseman or whoever's going back for that puck is is a little more careful. Sure. You know, they either they either rush a play and and they don't make as as good of a play. Same thing with the wingers too, because you know he circles back and and throws and throws hits. So uh, you know something like that where, where where guys know they have a little bit less time out there because they might get punished um so i think that's definitely the, the main area um obviously he's he's been pretty good offensively this year too so he can chip in in front of the net and, and give tj a break every now and then but i think tj's been phenomenal been uh you know so that's 
that's not somewhere where I think that they're lacking. I think he's, he's definitely picked up that. Um, so I'd say that's just, the, that's the main, that's the main thing. But at the same time to it, I feel like they're, it could be wrong, but it seems like they're, they're focused, right? They're not, they're not getting too caught up in any, any of the uh, physical rough stuff, right? They're like, just, just doing enough to, to piss guys off without really going over the edge and, and been pretty good at, at staying out of the box. But I mean, at this point, they they might as well just keep going in the box. Florida's power play has been atrocious, awesome. and yeah. the Caps penalty kill has been great. It's just it's crazy to see. What are they over fifteen over now? 15. And, 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 and and look, they got some chances, but they just they look snake bitten. They look snake bitten. They look like kind of lazy out there too, which is you know what you always say is you got to outwork the PK. PK's got to outwork the power play and. And, and they just look like they're not really moving it that great, and which is surprising, right? Like, they, they're even talking about it on the one broadcast. Today. Like they need to they need to be, you know, making some bang-bang plays down low to the slot, and they're not doing that. And you got to give the Caps credit because their sticks are in great yeah. spots. Their bodies are in great spots. They're killing it perfectly. And uh, and so, that, you know, it's, it's, you know, part of the game plan, part of the execution. And then, you know, that's, that's just one side of it. But, like, I – was writing down some notes during during the game and and yeah it's like about these goals and and how they're going in and stuff like that the one thing that the caps need to do more of is is those floaters through at the from the point yes. with traffic you know like bob is i don't every time a puck is getting shot through i think it's going in because i feel like he's not seeing the puck that great through these screens right like some goalies are great at finding it and anticipating but you know, at times he's good, but for the most part, it seems like he's guessing, I guess, and, and hoping that it's just going to hit him. And so more of that, you know, it, it's got to, it's got to come from, from some of those screens. No goalie likes traffic, but I think uh, he especially doesn't like traffic. Yeah. You, you played with, you played in front of Braden Hopi a lot. Who It seemed like he wanted to see everything. Like he didn't want you blocking shots and getting in this shot lanes. I don't know how Bobrovsky is as a goaltender, but it seems like he wants to be able to see as much as he possibly can, kind of like Braden. Well, that's it. Goalies for sure want to have a chance to make the save, right? They don't want to get scored on without even having a chance, right. not knowing where it is. And that's what Holtz always said too. If it was a, if it was a clear shot, because I remember one time I, I tipped one in, um, a guy was coming down the down the wall just inside the blue line, and I could get a stick on it, but just barely. And I got a stick on it, and it went top corner. And I remember Holtz just said, he's like, those ones from the outside. He says, I'll stop those every single time. And if I don't, then that's on me. You right, know, sure. It's yeah, it's on me and it's really bad. He said, just, just let those ones go through. Anytime you think that it's a relatively easy shot, let me have it and I'll, and I'll stop it. And so, you know, it's hard as, as a defenseman that wants to block shots, you, you want to try everything you can, but you need to let the goalies see it, you know? And, uh, and when you, you, you know, when your goalie's screened and if that goalie is screened, you do absolutely everything to block that shot. You know, you, you lay it all out there and, and, uh, and if he's not quite screened, then you do everything possible to get that other player out of there, or at least get a stick out of there. Right. Change of direction is, is death for the goalie. So yeah, it was just, yeah, I think that's, that's a key, a key to success right there. And then obviously, like I said earlier, turnovers, turnovers is just also death. You mentioned uh, the Oshi thing and Peter Laviolet said this to us yesterday, I'm losing count of days here, that the, with Wilson out of the lineup, Oshi brings that kind of energy left. TJ oshi has been probably the best capital player in the series other than Ilya Samsonov, right? I, I'd say so, yeah. He's He's been doing a little bit of everything. You know, he's, you can you can nitpick on, on guys and find, you know, issues and turnovers and stuff. And, you know, I'd, I'd have to rewatch rewatch all his shifts to, to try and nitpick him, but there, I don't think there's been anything glaring negative, you know, and that's, that's yeah. huge. You want to definitely have more, more in the positive and, and he's for sure had that. Um, I, I think it, his ability to tip pucks, and I know some of them have just gone off of him, but his ability to tip pucks has been on display too. He is, he's got one of the best hand eyes I've ever seen, like watching him in practice, throw a puck up almost to the ceiling and be able to catch it sometimes is, is insane. And so you're, we get to see it now and in, in the playoffs too. So it's pretty exciting stuff. Um, but yeah, he's, He's been a big driver, big driver of offense, and, and he's always a big driver of, of energy for the team. Uh, one guy, the guy who's been the driver for the Florida Panthers is, is Carter for Hagee. And I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to look this up because he didn't break into the NHL until 2019-2020. You didn't even get, get a chance to play against Carter for Hagee. I just looked this up. You, you, you didn't yeah. play a single game against Carter. He was a late bloomer. Uh, two goals for the Capitol, for the Panthers in, in that, that game four in D.C., Five points tonight, a uh, Panthers franchise record. Where the heck did this guy come from? 
That's a good question. <laughs> I guess that's, that's just goes to show you how many good players there are out there that sometimes we don't really even know about yeah. and they, and they just need an opportunity to play. Right. That's, that's sometimes the way it is an opportunity to play and then play with good players on a good team where, you know, if you're an offensive guy, you can, you can uh, kind of flourish. Um, but like, I'm just thinking back to the, to the goal, the, um, the, the Barkov pass, like that wasn't, it was a nice, nice pass, but it wasn't perfectly flat. And he's still able to hit it solid top corner. Like that's a pretty, yeah. you know, f- fairly difficult play to to get that great of contact and be able to elevate it the way he did. And, you know, it was just just great execution by him. And and you you need you need things like that in the playoffs where someone's going to really step up. And you know, maybe maybe they didn't think he was going to be the guy. They probably thought it was going to be a Huberto or a more Barkov. You would think so, right? I, I or, think... or Giroux or Duclair or, or Bennett or yeah. Reinhardt. And Carter Verhage's exactly. been the guy. Exactly. I think actually Barkov has been kind of quiet. Like, I don't know what kind of points he had tonight, but I think overall he's been, you know, relatively quiet. I think they've been, the Caps have been doing a pretty good job against him. Yeah. Barkov with two, two assists tonight. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I'm getting crushed on our, our Capitals beat writer group chat because I, again, as, as, as you and I talked about, I really thought they had control of this game. So this is a very much a blame Wino situation uh, for, for, for this yeah. game. So everyone can blame me as much as they want. I really did think the Capitals had this in, in control. When we come back, I want to leave this in the rear view mirror. I want to talk only about, about game six after this and, and kind of what the Capitals need to do to avoid elimination to force a game seven in Sunrise. Welcome back to a Blame Wino episode of All's Caps with former Capitals defenseman Carl Osner, um, AP hockey writer Steve Wino. And, and okay, we're going to leave game five behind. We've talked about it a lot. We've talked about what went wrong. Game six in D.C. on Friday. And let me, let me before I ask you what the Capitals need to do to win, because that seems to be the, the, the generic question. The crowd... And you played in front of a lot of these crowds. They got really tight. And if the team falls behind, the nervous energy, how does a crowd avoid that? How, how, does, how does this crowd, because they have seen a banner risen. They've seen a, a cup parade. How, mm-hmm. how, like, what is the best way for fans in the building on Friday night to handle this? The players aren't feeling it from fans. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough because, I mean, it sounds really stupid too, but you need – like those chants, the music, you know, like the, the let's go. You got to you, you gotta work for Game Ops, like a oh. game, a game up entertainment on, on Friday I, night. I honestly would love to just, and I might be living in a fantasy world and think it's just really easy to just throw this stuff up on the Jumbotron and, and everyone's going to cheer, maybe, maybe. But that's just the way that I see it as, as a fan and as a player. It's like the more noise that happens, then, then the better it is. And of course, the fans... They're, you know, they're invested, right? So they feel, they feel nervous. They want to win really badly as well. And, and it's hard to get yourself out of that, that frame of mind of, of, of being nervous and just wanting to sit there and, you know, and right. be quiet and, and hold on. It's like, it's so hard, but you need to let loose there. And, and the more, more noise, the better. The sing-alongs need to be just as loud, if not louder. You know, I, I, I love having any opportunity to cheer for someone. The Sammy chance, you know, like, oh yeah. Things like that. By the way, it is Sam Stonoff, right? Like, like no doubt. I would, I would think so. I'm just, yeah. I'm just asking the question. Yeah, I, my guess would be Sammy okay. again. Um, things like that. I, just, I would think the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, they just need to happen, you know, and that 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 goes a long way. The more the more energy in the building, the better. You know, you don't need to. You know, players are all, already feel a little bit of nerves. Don't need to feel it from uh, from somebody else as well, and the, the fans included. So I think that's probably what would be ideal, and I'm hoping that's the case. I don't think I'll be there for the whole game, so I'm, I won't get to see it. So you'll have to. You'll have to let me know. <laughs> I, 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 I will be over there for the whole game because I'm being paid to be there for the whole game. That's, 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 that's kind of my job. But a good example of this is, is that the Rangers brought back the Who, Baba O'Reilly, as their intro song tonight. And nice. I'm sure you remember that from those those playoff series you played in at Madison Square Garden. Like, I know they took, they took two dumb penalties early on, the Rangers did in that game. But, like, the crowd was into it. Like, as soon as the Rangers came back, like, there was something about a playoff vibe at Madison Square Garden that the Capitals Arena, like, I remember coming in from my first few playoff games, covering games at that building. That building can get rocking. Like, oh, when, yeah. when, when, when it's not tense and it's not tight, it's really fun. And, and, yes. and, 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 I, and obviously, if the Capitals were winning the series 3-2 going into Game 6, there would be a different kind of energy. But to keep the nervous energy out of there, I almost think the Capitals need, I don't mean, not necessarily a first goal, but like a first shift, like hit somebody. Like Alex Ovechkin crushes somebody off a first shift. Something like that that gets a crowd into a game and takes the nerves and just say, you know what, we're having fun here. And, 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 and maybe that sort of leads to a different kind of atmosphere. 
Yeah, I think you, yeah, you see anybody sees Ovi go and, and lay the body the first couple of shifts, they're going to be fired up about it. It doesn't even have to be a massive hit, just a finish, you know, and, and people are going to be excited to see it. And, and I think it will, you know, like Osh said in the media, if, if all the players see him hitting, they're going oh, to yeah. start hitting. And, and it's just making sure that you, you know, stay on the right side of the line there and don't get, you know, you want to feed off the crowd, but you don't want to go overboard. And so that's... Well, who cares? Uh, the, the Panthers power play is over the series. That's true. Go overboard against them. Just don't get suspended, I guess. Is, is what don't, it get, is. don't get suspended. That's, that's, that might be the line. Yeah, like the Darnell Nurse thing. He's That was he, stupid, he, wasn't it? That, yeah, that's aggressive. See, that's the thing. Like, you could just get... Your emotions can get you sometimes. So you got to be careful. But, but yeah, that game is going to be so important. That The beginning of it, I think it's the same thing. You know, whether whether whatever Panther storm is going to come at you, but the it's just the turnovers. I'm telling you, I just say it over and over again. It's yep. always a long game and, and you can't, it, you know, a bouncing puck on Carly that, that bounced over his stick. That is kind of routine that he would normally just, you know, punch down towards the net, the, the toe pick from Orly, although, you know, maybe it would have been a, a three on three instead of a three on two or a, sorry, a, a, what ended up being a three on one, I guess, yeah. you know, just little things like that, that you just have to be so sure that you're not, you're not making any of those, um, you know, mistakes or bad bounces are happening because of you're putting yourself in a position and it's, and it's hard because it, it happens sometimes, but you do your best to, to make sure you don't get yourself into that position. And they've, they haven't done it for the majority of the series. Like they've probably, they've probably done it to themselves in grand total, maybe, maybe three periods in this entire series where they've had some issues with, with turnovers or not, not having all five guys back or at least four guys back. So that that's the key to success right there. They've proven it already. I think the one thing that would fire the crowd up more than anything, and I can't promise it's going to happen, but if Tom Wilson is in the lineup for <laughs> so, somehow, some way, and is able to be on the ice, even if he plays a six, six minutes, because that's what Connor McMichael's playing right now anyway, unfortunately, and the Capitals are really playing with, with 11 forwards, but the Willis-Reed sort of effect from Tom Wilson would have something, a, a big hit, something like that. But I just think as the, the longer the game stays 0-0 or the Capitals lead, they're better off because a, a falling behind crushes the entire kind of feeling in the building. But I think as long as the game stays close, I think it's the Panthers who are going to have to endure a Capitals push, not the other way around. Yeah, I think you're probably right. And that's hopefully the way hopefully the way it will go. But yeah, that's a, that's a good point. If if Tom makes a surprise appearance, that would that the fans would really would really like that. But man, I don't know. It's going to be a, a bit of a long shot. I don't I have no idea if he's even skated. He didn't the other day when I was at the rink. So no, I'm not and, and and he hasn't. So again, we're we're not betting on this. Yeah, we're not betting on it. Who said we do not make bets? Do don't not bet on hockey, us. kids. Don't, do, don't, don't. <laughs> don't listen to us no, when we give you recommendations. We, this, we're, we're, not, we're not giving recommendations. Uh, although, although I did say the Capitals to win the series when it was 2 2, it's still good money. And, and, and call me crazy, but the Capitals aren't out of the series. Like, like, to, like the way the series has gone, like there, there's been a push from the Capitals, a push from the Panthers. And it, unless the, the power play for the Panthers heats up, which look, that could, you blame me for that too. If they go three for five in, in game six, it's all over. And the season's over and all that. But given the way the Capitals' penalty kill has been, and as good as Samsonov has been, Oshi, all that, like we could have a big game out of Backstrom. We could see a big, big game out of Eller. I don't think this team is done. Yeah, no, I agree with you completely. They 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 are not getting um, you know beaten up over the ice anywhere. Uh, you're right about the the uh, the power play though, and it's funny we we complained about it last time about there being too many penalties, and then this this game there wasn't a whole lot. So it's about it's about time. It's about time. The refs are clearly listening to us talk here on the podcast. So oh oh, oh I, I inquired with the league office too. So this, this is there. <laughs> every, everyone's aware of what's going on right now. <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah, it's it's just let them play. But, you know, let's see. Let's see who's better overall here. Five on five, right? Yeah, five on five. Let's see what happens here. Um, uh, yeah, I think that uh, I think that the Caps are going to be pretty. I would assume they're going to be pretty solid next game. You know, they they know what's on the line. They know how important these things are. And you know, even Florida though, Florida played in a big game seven. Was it? Did they go to game seven last year with no, Tampa? No, no, they didn't. They didn't get the seven. Six, right? Yeah. Six, yeah. So there you go. So they they've they have been in some big games, but nothing, I guess, that's quite like that. And I feel like the Caps. You know, this is where their experience hopefully comes comes into play. You know, it's that the thing I told you when you win one game, you think you're going to sweep, right? Oh, yeah. So now all that's going through the like the Caps already know that for them to win this series, they have to go back to Florida. Yep. You know, the, the Panthers are thinking in their head, we need to win because we don't want to have to go back home and play. You know, they they they're already and they want to go um, home and play and play game one against the Leafs or the Lightning. 
Exactly. I can guarantee you some guys in their heads are already onto the next series. That's just the way it happens. Right. And so it's, it's keeping focus. And, and I feel like the hope the, I think the caps are in a better position there. When we spoke less than 36 hours ago, what did I say the Capitals need to do to win the series? Keep the Panthers from scoring at five on five, all five goals, five on five from the Panthers tonight. That's, yeah. that, that, that's, the, that's the thing that to, to win game six, to me is if they can keep the Panthers from scoring at five on five, even if they allow a power play goal, they can win a game six and avoid elimination. Yeah, totally. Uh, I mean, you gotta have, you gotta be good five on five in, in this, except uh, who breaks the mold there. Is that the, the Oilers uh, King series? Like the, uh, the Oilers have actually been good five on five. No, they, what is it? And, and, and they're, well, they're, they took dumb penalties the other night and gave up power play goals too. Yeah, they've been bad on both, I guess. <laughs> even, <laughs> even, good even, and bad. even Connor was bad on that 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 overtime winner by the by the Kings. Yeah, you know that's it. La- just a little bit, a little bit lazy. You know, you you stop working for just a second. Who was it? The um, the goal tonight with Ekblad and Bobrovsky in front of the net, right? Yep. Just just for a second, they both one thinks one guy has it, and then the Schultz, other... and the Schultz, and then it just goes in, right? It's it's just the way that it works. So it, yeah, it's it's it is literally the game of inches. You know, like all like all sports is, and and hockey's no different. I'm terrible predictions. I'll give you I'll give you a chance to make a game six prediction now before we go. <laughs> Game six prediction. It's um, well. I said I said the Caps were winning in five. I said they were going to win in six. Well, now so, you need now, now you're now, now you have to say seven. So I'm going to say that they're going to win in seven, which means they're winning uh, on Friday. All right. Well, you, you heard it here first, uh, Carl. Thanks for doing this. Uh, caps at Caps all Caps after dark. Uh, we'll talk to you all after game six in DC on Friday night.